Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the We Play Lock and Load, and it's Virtus Pro taking on Gambit. I think this is our final best of one of today, Alex, and this should be interesting. Not a good day for Polish Counter Strike just yet, but well, let's see if Virtus Pro can turn that one around. Well, it's not a great start for them. Bombic gets a long range headshot with the Glock. The B site is under lockdown from Gambit, and Virtus Pro have to try and go for this retake. They have a defuse kit in the hands of Tau, but they've got to get some kills first, and currently they're not finding any frags. Ehoo, that spots a player close. There's the one tap. There's a couple more players on the opposite end of that. Kind of weird getting used to the new Virtus Pro logo. Oh, boy, Ali. He's going to move on up. There's the headshot back and forth. They go Dozier, the last man alive. One versus four. The Molotov coming in. It's going to land on the spot, but the defuse is already coming through. The smoke is on it as well. That's the defuse. Me who gets it. And a headshot from Bialy to end it all. So good cleanup from Virtus Pro coming back into the bomb site. Tau is very low health on the defuse there. Just one stray bullet from Dozier may have been enough to delay things further, but doesn't come through. Virtus Pro successfully retake that B bomb site. And into the second round, we are going to see a four spy from Gambit. We're seeing a lot of second round four spies after the bomb gets planted, Dinko. And you can kind of see why. These two guys, not too different, but Snacks has just mowed them down in Pop Dog. That's a great start. Converter build of death towards the Pop Dog, but Mir, he'll come in behind and find himself Snacks. That's a Galil, but questionable play, but he will fall in the end, gets punished for it. But Ali. I'm going to sneak behind the smoke. Axel is running away. He's got five bullets in that M4A4. Time can slow again. There's the whole Tau with the Org. We already see it come through. It's already grabbed its first victim. Last player is Mo. Or is it Mao, Alex? I'm sure it's Mo. Mo. And some people call him Mao. I'll call him Mo. And there we go. By Ali. Doesn't care. He just shoots him in the back of the head. I mean, when you say Mao, it gives me flashbacks to a dictator who killed lots of people, so please no. It's gotta be Mo. Good round win by VP, though. Against the Force Spy, they weather the storm, and we should see a much easier round win into the third. Only pistols for Gambit Gaming. And if Snacks did work last round with the MP9, this time it should be even easier. That MP9 definitely shreds through the opponents who don't have the armor. Yeah, Virtus Pro <clears throat> should be able to close this one pretty easily. Me, who's got to find himself? Dozier. Yeah. Like my accent. Anyway, Snacks, he got himself Axel, and he drops to the floor. And uh, I kind of talked about this earlier. Gambit have uh, also got a new roster. Virtus Pro, obviously, they've brought in some old, some new as well, and they're mixing them all together, but it's looking good so far. Three in a row for Virtus Pro. Nice rhyme. Thank you. Yeah, three round wins on the trot. Into round four, Gambit will get a fairly good buy. I'm hoping that this is just a tactical pause. We can see the ES bet odds while we're waiting, and we can see the new VP logo, who are favoured in this matchup. I just thought it would be a bit closer than this, though, Dinko. I know Gambit have had a bad start, but definitely a... a team that have shown some potential it's still relatively close i mean earlier we've seen heroic take on windstrike and windstrike were obviously less favored to win that and they ended up winning it um, it's a best of one anything can happen in these matchups although train is traditionally a pretty good map for virtus pro obviously it's been completely different roster well not completely there's still similar elements we got Bali, got the uh, snacks and obviously me who's there has been in the roster for quite some time now so Let's pro have a good few of the players. Time is uh, still picking, but it's very slow, and there's plenty of time left for Gambit to make a play. So they're just going to go set up two players off towards Ivy. Uh, up in the brown holes. Bondic is waiting. Bondic coming into this team. He's stood in for uh, Malta. He's stood in for Supernova Malta, and he's in the roster full time now. Now we'll see how Bondic can fit into this squad. I think Bialy's crosshair's a little bit low for the headshot height there. I guess he's hoping they crouch. Either way, Dozier has taken some early damage from the nades. 50 seconds left for Gambit to make up their minds. 
In the past, Gambit have been a pretty slow-paced team. They've been quite a strategic team when Blade was the in-game leader. Now they've switched it up slightly, but they're still going slow in this round, Inka. Uh, kills coming through. It's a man advantage there for Gambit, but pull back. Snatchy arrives to the party. He's got himself a kill with the AWP, and the bomb is on the floor. 22 seconds left, and Gambit need to get across to that bomb site. It's going to be incredibly difficult having Tao and Snatchy just waiting inside of the connector together. Bomb will get planted if Bondic will confirm so, and the bomb is actually planted for Ivy. There's a player already in there, so this retake. We be difficult for Virtus Pro, but definitely possible. They've got utility to make it work. Ooh, Snatchy gets the wall bang over towards Dozier and he follows it up with the second. Beautifully done by Snatchy in the retake. And the defuse should come through shortly, just before Tao upgrades to the AK. But very well done from Snatchy there, landing some nice shots to win the round. Yeah, Snatchy is uh, definitely a reason he's been brought into this roster. It is the amount of skill that he has. And I'm looking at his replay and seeing shots coming in from Snatchy. Really making the difference in this round. Obviously, the retake was all on this guy. And there was uh, rumors when Virtus Pro sort of broke apart and defragmented that Snatchy was meant to be that player that the team was built around. He has a lot of star part on this on this side. And obviously, he was when AGO were on the rise, he was the main man on that team. So... Definitely brings a lot of firepower back to Virtus Pro. Well, Gambit continuing their slow pace into round number five. Thanks to getting that bomb down and thanks to making that last round close, they've got a really good buy into this subsequent round. Snatchy blinded up towards B. That gives away the position of one of the orbs, but they might not expect Snacks to have a secondary orb on the CT side as Bialy gets aggressive at just the right time. Axile not expecting that aggression to come forwards. That means VP are again at a man advantage. Oh, here comes Utility. <clears throat> Gambit chucking it on in towards the A bomb site. Rocket is going to come through from me, who, and that should. Slow them further. I mean, he actually spots the feet of the player inside of Olaf. Gonna tap a couple of shots. And people aiming for the shoes. Finally, a fry coming in from Ehu. He'll be happy enough to further the advantage that Virtus Pro have, but Bombic has slipped in. There's the kill. He's dropped the two HP. Finished off from, from Bialy up towards Heaven. And Mo needs to be careful. He slipped onto the site. Got the bomb. He looks up towards Heaven. Hits the headshot onto Bialy. Tao comes in. There's the fry. The bomb is now dropped. One versus three. Mura has a very tough challenge ahead of him. Trying to turn it into a series of one versus ones. He's hit the first towards Ivy. And Tao locked in on the site. He has finished off as well. 5 to 0 for Virtus Pro. Again, Gambit losing the early fight and then always having to come back from the early disadvantage. They seem to be trying to go for these set takes in towards A. They're lining up all these smokes, but Virtus Pro are avoiding the nades really well. And it's not really causing too many issues for VP on that A site. They have been able to easily match Gambit's aggression. And heading into round six, this should be another round win for the Poles when you look at the weak buy that Gambit have gone for. Builder picking up towards heaven, trying to build out a shot. Up on top of upper, I like Gambit, but for this pro, just going for the very standard setup, very long range. They know they're going up against a weak buy, so don't want to be overwhelmed by the pistols. Oh, that's such a nice position to have the org actually where Tower is playing. Just up above the ladder on the spools. Oh my goodness, they went for the boost, and Snatchy spots it. Murr finished off, and the org tapping away. That was actually quite a nice setup coming in from Gambit, a little bit of innovation to try and open things up. Good spray from Tao. The bomb is being planted. They're going to get this bomb down. Dozier happy to get the bomb plant in. Not going to be getting any kills on the round, but a little bit of extra money. Gambit would have been fine to buy in the next round anyway, but it just gives them a bit of extra cash. $800 extra onto each player. 
And now we've got to see if Gambit have something else up their sleeve for this gun round. They've gone for set plays on towards A in two of their early gun rounds. Now we've got to see if they've got something else prepared for this one. Because those A executes haven't been working, Dinko. They haven't. And this might just get more difficult. Double up setup. Snacks and Snatchy. That's actually quite a scary um, thought when you think of it on paper. That should be excellent. Snacks back when he was in his prime was definitely an incredible AWP player. And he hits the first shot. Mo has dropped to 31. Not lethal. Although Snacks might have just got an extra chance of it. But he not quite react fast enough. He's going to get caught up for a mirror. That's such a nice little peek from her. He knows that, okay, things I've crossed, I'll just pick out and see if I can pick him up. And indeed, that's what happens. He catches Snacks with a grenade in his hand, and the advantage is given to Gambit. Bialy deciding to push into Pop Dog. Being a man down, you can afford to start to take some of those risks. And this gives Bialy the opportunity to rotate much more quickly between the bomb sites if he's willing to go up the ladder. Again, Gambit really taking their time here. They're wanting to make sure they have everything well set up, but Bialy continues his success in Pop Dog. The nade's finally coming towards the site as Mir leads the way. There's the opening he was looking for. Trades continue to come through, and it's VP who get a flurry of frags and stop Gambit in their tracks. This is another round where VP just shut Gambit out of the A site. Virtus Pro, he looks poor at the start, right? You find snacks you find snacks early when you're Gambit, right? You got the advantage, but Virtus Pro, when it matters, find the flurry of Frank, and that is that opening from Mir. That could have turned the tides. The alley, this is excellent. From the pop dog, able to do some damage, and then shut the players down as they move in towards the A-bomb site. So excellent job from Virtus Pro, and that'll put them ahead by seven. This is starting to get very scary for Gambit. You know, generally when it's 7-0, you're starting to see a pause come through, and look at the way those odds have shifted, Alex. We thought it was, uh, you thought it should have been closer? Well, it's just going to be a landslide on the odds. 5.00 to 1.15 over at es.bet. Yeah, it seems like Gambit are a bit stuck in their ways right now. Maybe these executes have been working much better in practice, but VP are playing really well around those smokes. They're getting aggressive, so they don't allow the full execute to come in. Bialy made sure he locked down the pop dog position, and then VP had everyone else rotating over into positions where those nades weren't really able to stop them. So Gambit need to find something else, maybe. I think at this point, I'd prefer them to just spread out at the start of the round and then maybe go back into a B execute, maybe put some more pressure on Ivy, because only going through A main is clearly not working. Gambit taking a little bit of control towards the brine holes. A nice run boost towards Ivy. Gets that player across safely without being spotted. Although Virtus Pro haven't really looked tested just yet. They just sit here, they wait for Gambit to come to them, and they just get the kills when they uh, they approach. So, excellent plays from Virtus Pro so far, but Snacks looks hungry. The push towards his Ivy position. Mihu creeping up slowly past the blue tree, and it's going to toss a Molotov in. It doesn't quite reach its mark, it actually bounces off the wall. Flash is good though. That'll stop Mira from going for that early peak. Gambit taking their sweet, sweet time once again. Mihu gets aggressive before the take can come in. We've seen this time and time again. VP get the opening kill with a little bit of aggression. Gambit try the A execute and generally it's not worked. And again, easy kill at long range with the AWP. Gambit look lost right now. There is Bialy up towards heaven and he strikes onto his lowly surfs below. As Alex and Mo left at a two versus five as Alex Axel actually will pick up the first. He's on to Snacks. It's into the 4v1. Mo will find the frag and it's into a 1 versus 3. Mo has to do this with 15 seconds. It's impossible. Snatchy picks up the frag. And it's 0 on the board for Virtus Pro. They're just. This is the Virtus Plow. I mean, we haven't seen that in a while, but I guess it's happening. Yeah, I think this comes more down to Gambit's mistakes, especially in that round. 
Uh, at least in the previous rounds, they were going for the smokes between the trains, but that time there wasn't even any smokes deployed. That's mm. just such an easy angle for the Orc to hold at long range. He'll happily take that fight all day long, and Gambit might go for some fast aggression, this time into the B-bomb site, switching up the pace of play as Tao does get overrun. Sachi needs to oh. land the flick, and he finds it all towards Mo. Bialy comes through and drops the bomb, and great work from Snatchy again. Those out close with a P250, but Snatchy just rips them apart. It's a triple for Snatchy, and a huge performance has led to the dominant start that Virtus Pro have as well. You know, yes, there has been mistakes on Gambit, but you have to capitalize off of those weaknesses, and Snatchy and Bialy, they've been doing exactly that. Well, I thought that the 16-3 victory from Prosto over Kingwin would be our most one-sided map of the day. Hopefully one of the Gambit players hasn't rage quit, because I know it's going badly for them. But <laughs> you've got to keep your head in the game. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect anybody from Gambit to rage quit. <clears throat> Mur is back, and they are ready to go. It's a solid, solid start from Snatchy. 14-1. and one. He's only died once, Alex. This is uh, some nice replays of the shots from Snatchy. I mean, he has got himself... He has got this really nice flick ability on that AWP. And uh, I hope that they can grow Snatchy as a player on this VP side. And we get to see more of him on the big stages because he definitely has a lot of potential. Starting to show some of that potential already here against Gambit. Definitely want to see it against some better opposition as well, but this is a good start. A couple of nades over early on from VP, but Mir loses the fight. Everything is going wrong for Gambit right now. He was holding the angle, ready for the peak, and at least Mo gets one kill back towards Ivy. Brings it into a 4v4, and Gambit starts to push Ivy for one of the first times in this entire map. Me who has slipped his way through Amy in though, and the bomb is actually just on the other end of that wall. So me who might cause a couple of problems. And they're coming back up. You hear the scope of Mo. Maybe it's just too far. You can actually hear that. So the bomb will be collected. For this pro. This might be the first time they've been under pressure so far in this matchup. Me who will hear them running back towards the B side of the map, and Bondic's already through. Tao needs to be careful. Bondic is right beside him. His teammates ro uh, rotate in there as well. And there's the shot. Finally, Mo strikes. There's a couple more players nice and close. But Mo has got the double. He'll get the bomb plant as well. And it's on me who on by Ali. He might strike here on one. But I don't know where he is. The element of surprise is no longer there. And with by Ali on 7 HP, it's just unlikely anything happens here for VP. So finally, Gambit post one. I think this is the first gun round where Gambit have gone towards the B site, and it's worked for them. They didn't even go for a full-on execute with the nades. It was mainly just thanks to the fact that Bondic was able to sneak into the back lines. Mo also landed some great shots to open up the site, and VP should probably play for exit kills here. The CTs have got loads of money. I understand that you want to save the orps, but at the same time, it's probably better to try and limit Gambit's money because whatever happens, VP's cash is going to be fine. Whereas if you take one or two guns away from Gambit, that could cause real issues for the T side. So I would have preferred VP to play for some exit kills there, but they just decide to save the two orps. Oh, yeah. Tosses a flash over towards the A-bomb site. Gambit, this is their time to really start making this half competitive. Imagine if they come back and, win a half, uh, and bring the half back to 9-6. And we've got a real game on our hands, Alex. And uh, it would be quite entertaining to see. Coming into this, I definitely thought this would be a, a pretty equal and even matchup between the two teams. Both having relatively new rosters, question marks beside them. And both struggling as a, as a blitz, so... I thought it would be a little closer than this, but for this pro, I've had a solid start. Time for Gambit to try and change that. Snatchy getting aggressive with the AWP. This is the aggression that's worked so well for Virtus Pro. Oftentimes, they've been able to get the opening kill, 
And once you get into a clean 5v4, your chances at winning the round improve dramatically. Most teams win about 75% of their man advantage situations, and this time it's Gambit who get the early lead. Mir opening up the site, Axile moving forwards. There are players up close, but they're not spotting him. Gambit able to get onto the site safely. Axel moving his way through, there's the first kill, flicks up, he knows he's a player in heaven, it's Snacks and he's got the AWP, he's looking just beyond the bomb tree and spots one, there's the fast shot from Snacks. he missed a couple but finally picks it up and it's into a 4 versus 3, Mirror trying to take him down but he's allowing time for his teammates to get in and tower has got himself one, tries to get the second and able to do so and it's Dozy and Bondic to take it over the line for Gambit's second. Yeah, that was almost a must-win round for Gambit. Otherwise, their money would have been down in the dumps. So, an important round win there. If Gambit can maybe get on a bit of a win streak now, then there's a hope for them. Obviously, VP are going to have a gun round for this one. Only the one AWP this time around. We've got a little bit of money in the back. As Mo goes down pop. Ooh, got stuck on the ladder there. So, he decides not to take the gamble. CT is going for a 4-1 setup, four players on the A site, and Tau solo holding B, which is pretty common on this map, on train. Oftentimes, if Tau is put under some pressure, he will call for the rotate, and that's exactly what's happened here. Snatchy rotates over with the AWP, and Bialy again is loving pushing into Popdog. There goes this flash, there's a pop flash down towards Bialy, this might just end him, he's full blind spraying, but it actually flashes Bondic as well. So Bialy is allowed to escape from the pop dog and stay alive on the A bomb site, and that's a big problem for Gambit. They would have really loved to have got that opening, and we're close to doing it as well. Bialy's just gone back in. <laughs> They've left it behind and he's gone back in. Gambit will just have to give that one up. Looks like Gambit have decided the B site is where they want to end this round. There are two CTs waiting for them. But if these nades are well positioned, then it's not going to be easy for these two players to have impact. The rotate's coming in, though. The aggression has come into A main. It's a four-man B stack for VP, Dinko. This is going to be so tricky for Gambit. Well, here they go, running into the bottom side. VP have already eliminated two players. Gambit having to walk through, and me, who's got the angle, he's got the headshot as well. And Bondic left alone. One versus five with no time on that clock. Probably better dying so they can get some cash into the next one. Rotus Pro back in the uh, winning seat again after a little bit of a hiccup there. V uh, Gambit went two in a row, but then Rotus Pro answer back. Who'd uh, spell bad news for the economy of Gambit if they end up losing this one? Definitely on the edge of being out of cash. You can already see that Mir's stuck on a Mac 10 for this round. At some point, I wouldn't mind Gambit going for a faster paced play in these gun rounds, and it might be this round where they go for it. Already four players in towards the brown halls. Tau is alone towards B, but Snacks has rotated over. These two orgs trying to lock down the B site, but Rondic rushes out through the upper position. Tau isolated on the site. Some kills come back in as Snacks doubles down. The bomb is now dropped on the site, and Gambit in trouble again. They have to try and recover the bomb, and that may be slightly harder than you expect, but by Ali, gonna prevent them from getting anywhere near that bomb. Dozier, he's got the long range SG, gets one, but again, Snacks is there to instantly trade. And Virtus Pro have just been outshining Gambit on an individual level. There's just been trade potential. Anybody dies on VP, instantly trade it back. And Gambit just, same can't be said. They've pushed through smokes in towards the B bomb site. Virtus Pro they're waiting for them. They pick up the kills. They've left it too late and they have to commit. And, and VP have been able to pick those up. So Gambit, after losing that one, their economy's back to the eco. And something I'm especially excited for is the level of performance we're seeing from Bialy. He's looking really confident. He looks like he's here to play in this tournament. Already up there at 18 kills on this map. And he's a player in the past who was great for Virtus Pro. So for him to find some form in this tournament is definitely a good sign. And up against the Eco, this round is going as you would expect. Bialy just claiming scalps <laughs> in towards A main. This is the Bialy we like to see. Yeah, that, that, this is just Bialy on full confidence. You know, he... There's times when we were casting when he went into that weird stint with McStuart, 
the mix he was playing with. He still had this incredible ear. He was definitely still the best player on that team, finding a lot of uh, a lot of frags. And again, we get to see some of it here on training. It's good to see Brothers Pro back to winning ways. I think it's been some time since, even though it's against a, a struggling gambit, it's still nice to see them win. It's not over yet, Alex, though, of course. I mean, they're getting vengeance for uh, for their comrades, Kingwin, who got 16 3 <laughs> earlier in the day. Maybe VP true. can do one better. If VP can get two more here in this half, then, uh, or one more in this half, should I say, then it, it should just be uh, pretty easy pickings if they're able to pick up the pistol after. Yeah, but come into this one with just the AKs. They've got a little bit of utility, but they have to try and make this work. Faster play from those you thought towards Ivy. Grip flash by me, who completely blinded by it. And that's a, that's a very fast movement from Dozier, just skidding on by, takes the headshot, and this time there's no trade from Virtus Pro. Clean man advantage for Gambit, but Bialy is so ballsy. I love it. Bialy gets the headshot beautifully done with the aggression coming up towards the top of Pop. And Bialy going back up the ladder to join his teammate who has pushed through B. Gives them all the information that it has to be an A play, but Gambit are already on the site. Might be time for Gambit to get a third. One will be planted and Dozier waiting for Snatchy to walk into his crosshair. Although Snatchy is definitely just waiting for someone to walk into his as well. Game of chicken and Dozier's got a peek first. There's the headshot. Snatchy ripped apart. And Bialy and Tao having to come into the two versus three. Make it one. And Axel, okay, picks himself up a triple and gets the sick double at the end. That's three for Gambit. Not great, but I guess there's a sign of life towards the end. I mean, the one advantage is that on train, if you can get a good start, if you can get those orps rolling, that's when you can easily go on a streak on your CT side, which was kind of proven by VP, right? They got that double AWP set up out. Snatchy and Snacks were both using the AWP to pretty high levels of success. I'm not sure who the secondary AWP on Gambit would be, but Mo is definitely a very capable AWP on this map. He's had some good games on train in the past, so that's something that Gambit are going to have to rely on. But to even get that AWP out, Dinko, they're going to need to win the pistol first. Exactly, and even at that, with the economy changes, I was going to say new, but they're not new anymore. Uh, with the economy changes, the pistol doesn't really have as much impact as it used to, so they would have to convert it as well. They'd have to win the pistol and the follow-up, and to even stand a chance in it after that, you really can't make too many mistakes, can you? So, down but in a very difficult position, they need a flawless CT half here. Well, VP pick a smoke and a flash on towards Tau. Dozier buys a full set of nades for Gambit alongside Axile's diffuse kit. Bit of a curious buy on the CT side. We'll see if he can put those nades to use as we head into the second half. Gambit having three players in towards A, two players holding passively on the B site. But it looks like VP are taking a page out of Gambit's book and taking a slow T-sided round. Just going to see if anybody gets aggressive on Gambit, immediately punish it, but I realize no one is going to walk right into their crosshairs. They might just have to commit. They've got plenty of utility here. Tau has a smoke and a flash. He's the furthest away from anybody. Perhaps he's left to, to fake. I've seen this strat actually used by Fiat recently. Well, it's a little different, but quite similar. Well, he's going to find the headshot from Tau. It's going to be the push down towards Ivy, but they just walked into a clothesline. Their heads have been chopped off, and it's all on Snacks. One versus five, and he might as well uh, just run out and try and get some headshots here, because they know exactly where he is. He's 24 HP. One bullet will do it, and there it is. 12 to 4. Gambit win the pistol, Alex. So... It really is on. Can they win the follow-up, though? That's the important one. Virtus Pro haven't really got that much money, so a fourth buy is not going to come through. It'll be the full buy in round number three of the second half. I think Gambit are still a little scared of that force buy, though. They have invested into a couple of rifles. They've got the SMGs as well, just to make sure they have some nades. And you can kind of expect this is likely to be a B-Rush from VP. They're going to try and get that bomb down on the B-Bomb site, and that nade is massive. Look at the damage early into the round. 
They're all soaked up. They're all softened. Really do damage with the SMGs now as well. Got the extra cash in the back of the UMPs or the MP9. BP running away from B. They don't want to stick around, but the bomb is there. That's the most important player, and Snacks has been left alone with it. He's the highest HP of them all, 81. I don't know how Bialy managed to stay alive, but he has. And go Snatchy. He's finished off by Mo, and the rotation's coming in for the rest of the SMGs, but it's a massacre. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh my god, Snacks is braining on them. The bomb is going to get planted in B. Incredible stuff from Snacks. He just stays alive in upper B. The player was so close, but somehow he's able to go towards the bomb site. He gets the bomb planted, and that's the $800 extra he wanted. Is Snacks a ghost? I don't know. He must have just morphed through those here, that. I thought Snacks was a, a bit of a fatty, but he managed to sneak uh, through the back lines there. I'm only kidding, Snacks. I love you, really. I mean, credit to him. That's a really good bomb plant, because now they actually get a much better bite. Like, they've got full nades. Wow. They can get an AWP if they want it. They can get whatever they want. Wow, well, that, that's really harsh, Hawk. <laughs> yeah, Look, even... I'm like as skinny as a twig, okay? Snacks could literally pick me up and break me in half, so... <laughs> I would pay to see that. How much? A lot. Oh, wow. Uh, would you pay me for it? Yeah, I actually would. That could be a business plan. Just get snapped in half. I don't, I don't think it's a very uh, sustainable one, though. I think it's a one-and-done business project. Although... We could make hawker dummies and just get snacks to snap them all. You could. I don't know what, what that would accomplish, but hey, I, I, did, I believe snacks could do it. Yeah, and because of that bomb plant, it means he gets extra money for the team. He's got a lot of utility in play. Gambit have got themselves two UMPs, M4 and two players, along with a FAMAS in the hands of Bondic. So, actually, VP's buy looks much better, so... This could end up uh, being another run on the board for VP. And I guess you can kind of say they're just trying to keep some weapons as a bonus here on Gambit. Bonus runs have kind of started to fizzle out a little bit, I feel. And they used to be very prominent before the economy changes, but now they're a little less impactful. Here goes Dozier. That's a nice pickup with the UMP. Mihu able to get himself a frog back, and it's into a three versus three. 40 seconds on the clock as they run on in. Mira's going to spot Mihu just charging through, not even aware that anybody could be at the bottom of the ladder. It's into a two versus three. Gambit have the advantage into the retick. And followed up by Bondic. All on Tau. Can he do it? And he's stuck on default, which means he has got to fight and it's not going to work. Bondic sprays away and Gambit secure another round win. The bomb plant might allow a buy to come through for Virtus Pro. Yeah, they can probably force up into this one and Gambit have got to be aware of that. I'd like to see an AWP bought up by Mo now. They've got the money for it. Should see that sniper come into play, but Gambit, they're, they're hanging on in this game right now. If they can keep this win streak going, then there's every chance they could come back into this one. The only annoying thing for them is when they allow these bomb plants, it means VP are just going to continue to buy. So Gambit haven't got any easy rounds coming up just yet. Bet they needed the flawless CT half. Well, it's a good start. That's a kill from Mo. That's a good starting point for round number 19 as well. I mean, it's going to go in it to upper. A little bit of damage on the town. Just take a little bit of a hit down to 97. I'm getting slower. And Dozier seems to want to go for this. He never takes his finger off the shift key. Here comes the push. Brothers Pro running right into the site. It's merely open things up. But Snatchy trades back. It's a three versus four, but Dozier, this is so smart. He's up inside of heaven. He'll fight himself the double, deny the bomb plant, and pretty much secure Gambit round number 19, as Mo will confirm. Dozier just sits back, waits for that bomb to be planted, then gets two kills for free, and that basically wins his team the round. Smart play from Dozier, a bit of an oversight from VP to not clear upper, but Dozier took advantage of that. And without the bomb being planted, this might be Gambit's time to shine, to get an easier round win. And as you can see, VP don't have that good of a buy into this round. So as long as Gambit don't get overwhelmed, this game is going to get closer and closer. It looks like Gambit are really going for this comeback.
go a long way yet, but they can definitely do it. I mean, if Virtus Pro were able to pick up 12, then it's definitely a possibility that Gambit can do it. We need a little bit more than that to close up the game, but the point still stands that a comeback is possible. Virtus Pro kind of slithered on the ladder. The goal here is to try and get onto the bomb side, but the problem is Axel is holding this angle using the bomb train as cover, and once they see the utility come in, you're going to throw counter utility, including the Molotov towards Pop Dog to prevent anybody from running through. It delays them, but they come anyway. Dozier with the first kill. Axel spamming away inside of the smokes, but they slip through the connector. Virtus Pro could actually run and split B. This is perfect. This is actually really nice to watch from Virtus Pro. Oh, Bialy's up close, but he doesn't get the kill. Bondic manages to find the headshot. The orc gets thrown into his hands. This retaker's still got to come through. They've got a man advantage, and that's extended further. Mihu not going to get the spray, and Snack surely cannot win this. He's about to be overwhelmed by the rifles. Manages to find the dink on Axile, but it's not enough. Virtus Pro, despite getting the bomb plant, will not get the round win, but definitely a good effort considering the buy they had. Yeah, that was such a nice strat. Just chuck all the smokes in the bomb site, cause so much confusion. Run from Pop Dog through Connector. Get the rest of your teammates to come in B at the same time. And have a nice, nice B split. Could have worked. Imagine if that was with rifles, or they had a couple of SMGs. Definitely possible that Virtus Pro would be able to pick that one up. So, yeah, but they're only four rounds away from evening out the score. And at the end of the first half, you didn't think it was it would be even possible that Gambit could be in this position, but they have definitely mounted this comeback. Interesting that we're only seeing one orb for Gambit. They've got the money for the second sniper, and I kind of said there earlier in the half that I'm not sure who the secondary orper for Gambit would be. Maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe that's why they don't want to go for the double orb setup. I'm sure Mo is very comfortable with the weapon, but he's going to be the only man taking the sniper for the time being. As for VP, they finally got an AWP into the hands of Snatchy, and he was landing some superb shots in the first half. So I'm sure they will be waiting to see if Snatchy can get them an opening in this round. As the A main aggression starts to come in from Bondic, I don't think he's going to push any further. It would be ill-advised to push any further if you're Bondic, especially if you have a teammate. Although this is a interesting setup from Gambit. We're just pro walk into A main. There's literally no chance that at least one of them survives. Here they go. Snatchy is the first man to walk into the lion's den. Axel is the first man to peek. There's the kill. Snatchy dropped. At least they know at least one player is there. But perhaps that could work against Virtus Pro. Who does he want to go for this? There's only one player, he thinks. But there's actually two. Doesn't really matter. Axel finds the kill anyway. They think Amien's cleared. No, Tau has the info. He's going to peek it. Axel dropped. Finally, Virtus Pro pulling this one back. But still, a man down thanks to Dozier with the AUG. And with 15 seconds left, nowhere near a bomb site. It's going to be Gambit again, poked in another round win. Nine for them. Yeah, Bialy not close enough to the action to have an impact. Ends up being removed by Dozier. And Gambit are really starting to make this comeback doable now. Again, we'll look at this A main aggression that worked so well for Gambit. Generally, they've been playing pretty passively towards A, so it was a really nice time for this switch up. Considering VP have been playing so slow, I like the idea to take a main aggression to try and stop VP before they can go for any sort of execute. And now we're down to just a three round difference, Dinko. I'm sure the Polish fans are starting to sweat. Yeah, I've seen some, uh, some fans in the chat not really enjoying this comeback from Gambit. Well, Virtus Pro still just have to keep that positive mentality. I mean, they haven't really had that many chances. In the gun runs, when they've lost the advantage, they haven't been able to pull it back just as well as they were done on the CT side. And I think you've also got to give it to Gambit just being much better on their CT side. They're playing very proactive, and they've just got A main again. Axel has just dominated this area of the map. It might be under pressure, though, here, Alex. A couple of nades being lined up into that A site. Bondic's in quite a strong position to stop this push out through A main. There's also a smoke up, so Bondic not oh. going to get the kill. Snatchy also comes in with another frag for VP. That nade is on point, though. Mo not going to get it done. He gets absolutely annihilated by Miku, and it's That's up not... to Dozier to win the clutch. He drops the bomb, but doesn't get anything else done. Virtus Pro finally on the board on their T side. 
Yeah, that smoke, uh, I don't know if it was meant to be there. It didn't really look like it was meant to be. I think it was meant to cover off the connector, but it lands on top of the bomb tray. You can spot the feet of the CTs and Virtus Pro will pick up another round win. Finally back on the board. They'd be happy about that one, and so will the fans. But Gambit, this is their time again. They've got the utility. They've got the buy after picking up multiple rounds in a row. The Virtus Pro, the challenge isn't over yet. They still have to jump over this hurdle. They win this one, they'll step closer to victory as Gambit's economy will start to dwindle. Same can be said the other way though. If Gambit were to win this round, whoa, he's just he's just standing on the ladder. That was scary. Bombic avoids the nade, luckily enough. He's thinking about pushing in here. The flash is well placed and again getting baited by the ladder. He's in him. Yeah, I think Bondix realized he has to fall back. Now the smoke has come into play. And so Gambit won't go for any early aggression into this round. Mo is in a fairly aggressive angle, but he's not going to push all the way into a main. 55 seconds for Virtus Pro to make their play. Leaning towards the B-bomb site. At least the bomb is there currently. Can switch up and change it, but they haven't got that much utility left. Going into the B bomb site is generally a little bit easier with limited utility. You only need one smoke for the ramp, technically a flash buying, and uh, you can hold on to that Molotov for the post plant. But here comes the push. Dolce is the man to strike first, and what a shutdown from Gambit. Virtus Pro aren't getting anywhere, but Bialian Snacks might have something to say about that. They find themselves two headshots, the Molotov will go towards the connector, and the bomb has been planted for Snacks. He has to be very careful though, he's only on 2 HP. One bullet through any box, a grenade that lands anywhere near him will eliminate him from this round. So, you should be careful. Look at this angle though. What a headshot. Bondic walks right into it, but Bayali, he didn't do enough. A nice snack is under so much pressure. He goes for the peak, but Axel watches it. It's Gambit to double figures, and Virtus Pro's lead might just slip through their fingers. I mean, they get the bomb plant, so I think the money might be okay. We'll look at that later because. These replays are showing just how the round went. Snacks was able to get this one kill here, but not enough. Gambit managed to win the retake eventually. And ooh, the money is nowhere near as good as I was expecting. I was thinking maybe there's a chance VP could force into this round, but they're just going to have to go for the pistols. And it seems very unlikely that VP will find success here in round 24. Only a few upgraded pistols to play with. I think in that last one, Snacks was just trying to go for the Molotov, but when he peeked out to throw it, he just got wrecked by Axel because he was watching the angle. But good stuff from Axel. Bondic will stop Snatchy from going any further than Olaf. Actually, watching the broadcast, uh, the E League broadcast, uh, Fizz playing on train. It's quite funny. It must be kind of awkward for Olaf Meister having to call Olaf. Pretty cool, though, I'd say, having a position on CS map named after you. Yeah, I think that's like uh, uh, ultimate respect towards you if you get an, a position named after you. Me who's got the Glock. He's got basically no chance at winning this round. Gambit should win without any casualties. A two round difference between the teams. This game really heating up as we head into the latter stages of this second half. Snatchy will be picking up the AWP. Tau decides to go for the SG, which we haven't seen much of throughout the day. Again, teams are definitely going towards the Org much more than the SG. I think just because the AK is always going to be good, whatever whatever it, it, it works with it. You know, people know the AK, they trust it. And oh, Mo spots the angle but doesn't pull the trigger. Tries to look towards Ivy. Doesn't look like the AWP is going to get the chance for the opening. VP going for a bit of a slower play. I mean, having control of A-Man is something they haven't had the luxury of so far in this match. So, I just want to hold on to it for a little bit. And Bondic, a stellar job at holding this, not allowing anybody near Olaf. He might be the gatekeeper again, but this time, going close. He's going to peek into A-Man. That's Tao drop, but Mihu close by. Bondic should know this. He's going to go for the push as well. Does damage, and Dozier proactive inside of B. He'll find snacks, and that is picking Virtus Pro apart. Bayali, Mihu, 
and Snatchy have a difficult task ahead of them. The bomb is going to group up with these two players in towards Ivy. Again, how are they going to get towards a site here? Bondic is holding up close. Bondic isn't looking the right way, though. No one's watching Ivy right now, and Bondic might be in trouble. He's about to be flanked. Easy kill for Bialy, and that could be the difference maker. Axile sitting in towards heaven, and they haven't spotted him. Axile gets the timing right. Mihu will fall, and Axile stepping up for the 3k. Gambit get the round win, all thanks to their young star. Well, Alex, do you remember uh, the first half? We thought, oh no, Virtus Pro are plowing their way through victory here, but we've got to this point where Gambit are only one round away from evening the scoreline out, and Virtus Pro, their money's in the bin. This is just incredible. Uh, Gambit have just stepped up on the CT side, kept their mentality strong, and the proactive play on the CT side has really disallowed Virtus Pro to have any control of any part of the map. You know, if they go towards B, Dozius they're aggressive. If they go towards A, A main's covered off by Axel or, or Bondic in recent rounds. So they've had very they've had a very difficult set of affairs here on Virtus Pro's T side. And they'll definitely need to change that if they want to be able to pick up this map. Oh, Dozier gives away his position after hearing the step. Virtus Pro have got a couple of pieces of utility that they can put towards this B site. Those two smokes are going to have to be placed well to make sure they can get that bomb down. Again, the main aim is the bomb plant. Anything else would be a bonus, but if they can just get that bomb planted, there's maybe a chance they could try and sneak away with this round win. The smokes are in position, the push is coming to the site, and Gambit are willing to play for the retake. Quite good for Virtus Pro, it means they get a little bit of extra cash they can work with into the next gun round. Two pieces of utility, maybe a better gun, and well, it's going to catch Mihu coming into this. Virtus Pro still stand a chance of doing more damage to Gambit and picking up more kill reward for themselves. I wouldn't really say it matters too much to the Gambit economy, it's well built up and Mihu has moved his way in, there's Snacks in the late flank, he's got himself one, looking for a triple, but could have committed to one of the frags, but it's a double from Snatchy, he spins around, nearly finds Dozier, and this is nuts, Snatchy wins it, and Virtus Pro will take 14 off the back of pistols, out of nowhere, Snatchy goes massive. Snatchy survives on one HP, spinning around on the site, having to deal with all possible angles, and yet he manages to get all three frags and pulls Virtus Pro through by the scruff of the neck. That was so well done from Snatchy. All just about the individuals in that round, and VP edge closer and closer to victory. But like you were saying, Gambit will be so disappointed when they lost that round. It comes down to Gambit playing on the retake. You know, they were leaving the bomb site open. Virtus Pro will let them plant. There's no way they can win this, surely. But Snatchy gets an AK. He hits the triple, follows up with the quad, and puts Virtus Pro back in the lead mentally, probably. And they're only two runs, oh, they're only two runs away from victory. So Gambit need the pause here. Their economy, if they won that, was in a nice position. But at this point, it's starting to dwindle. And so Virtus Pro might have just done enough at near the end of this map. And it was an interesting decision by Gambit to play for the retake there. It was definitely a risk to be willing to give up the bomb site so easily without even getting a single kill. I think they were trying to spray through the smoke, but they didn't connect on the right angles, and they were playing so far back that they couldn't do anything to even slow down the bomb plant. Maybe if they had some nades for the site, then they could have slowed it down and had some more time for the retake, but they weren't ready to use their utility. And so once the bomb got planted by VP, that instantly put the pressure on Gambit for the retake. And that time pressure can always make things chaotic. And that is exactly what VP's aim is in that round. Just cause some chaos and hope the pistols can make the difference. And that's exactly what happens. The Virtus Pro runs away from victory here. Gambit, two away from even in the scoreline. If they are able to answer back here on the CT side, Virtus Pro might just fall again. Early damage done. Snatchy is a player to take most of the damage on board. Drop to 55. Mihu there on 62, and a lot of near damage coming in from Gambit. Now was trying to pressure towards Ivy, and it's successful in winning that opening fight against Mo. And so the advantage is now with Virtus Pro 
and there's still plenty of time to make a final decision on where they want to go. They have no need to commit, but Snacks has already pushed through. The smoke fades and Snacks just spots the head of Dozier. B is under wraps. No one is there for the CTs and Virtus Pro might just get another round win here. VP are really taking their time here. Snacks is on the B site. Viali gets the kill on the edge of the smoke and Axile and Mir will try to stick together. Snacks is flanking from Connector. Great shot from Axile, but the AWP is in position. Snatchy replies with a kill of his own, and Tao, caught off guard, gets the shot. How does he win that fight? Mir should have had that kill all day, every day, but Tao turns it on its head, and VP have got map point. Incredible stuff from VP towards the end of this. It was looking down and up towards the end, but... With Virtus Pro having one hero performance from Snatchy, that might have just been enough to, to bring back that motivation to the team. And they've all stepped up. Bayali has had an incredible performance this match. Snacks making some annoying plays against Gambit, always where they don't expect him to be. Obviously Tao, he was the man to open up the last round, and also with the ending kill. So, Virtus Pro having a, a team effort. And his map point. They have the economy control, they have the better weapons. All Gambit have are a couple of pistols, an SMG, and the one rifle in the hands of the youngster Axel. And that play in the previous round was such a classic Snacks play. He always seems to be able to get into the enemy lines and make plays like that. And again, it's, it's awesome to see some of the old style of VP coming through. A couple of the experienced players showing themselves to be good. And just as I say that, Snacks makes a bit of a mistake, gives away his life, but Snatchy comes in for the trade, and VP will look to come back into this round. They need to be careful here as well. The only being low makes him susceptible to death by pistol, but Tao's already picked up the headshot. Mo has been finished off, and Gambit edge one step closer to victory. Smokes off the pop dog. Bomb will eventually make its way in towards the A site. Virtus Pro don't want to be caught by any of these pistols, so we're making sure they've cleared all the angles, all the necessary nooks and crannies. Gambit are going to play for the retake. No kit alive, so they've got to move quickly. And Snatchy, he's here towards a mid. He's a player there, but he's not going to peek just yet. They're waiting until every Gambit player is ready, but Snatchy, he finds the frag towards Pop Dog. That pushes Mir into the open, and Dozier in a 1 versus 3. No kit alive, and Virtus Pro surely went in here. Finally, Dozier will pick up a kill as he strikes back into the site, but the time is ticking. There is no kit alive on Dozier, and it is Virtus Pro. They will be taking 16-12 here, and it's Bayali to finish it off. What a performance from Virtus Pro to claim 